Welcome to Ignite 365 Outreach. We are collecting for the Voice of Hope that is a pregnancy and family center. If you would like to donate, we have a pink baby bottle. The donations you'll be able to provide in pregnancy tests, ultrasounds, and family education. Monthly small group, men's, women's, and children's group. Friday, September 23rd, 5 to 8 p.m. Saturday, October 29th, from 5 to 8 p.m. We will have a meal and then the small group to follow. 2022 Annual Walk for Suicide Prevention, September 24th. See Rachel for registrations. Community Care March, October 15th. 8.30 a.m. and then there's another one. If you want to get a t-shirt, you go at 8.30 a.m. and then the walk is at 9 a.m. Blank, blanket Drive, October 16th. So you can bring blank, blankets or sleeping bags. That's for the flood relief. Pastor Depreciation Day. We have a we will have a cookie bar after evening service to appreciate the pastors. Now the praise may come up for worship, and also today is Back to Church Sunday. Good evening. Hello. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to be here. Where two or three are gathered in his name. I was going to say, do I have to bring that to There he is. <laughs> He's in our midst. So we should rejoice in the Lord with all our hearts, irregardless of how many are here, because the Lord's here. Amen. He's worthy of all our praise. Every ounce, every inch. Should hang over there? No. Before we open in praise, let's. We thank you, Father, again, for this blessed evening to worship you. Lord, you are worthy of all our praise, Lord God. I pray that you will receive these offerings from our lips, that they would be a sweet-smelling savor to you, Lord God, that your presence would be known tonight, Lord, that we would be transformed and renewed in you, and that we would know a fresh, have a fresh anointing from you. We'll give you all the praise. Let's stand. Upon their 
Son of God. And he wrote these things. He says, These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. When you do that, when you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, something happens. That by believing, you may have life in his name. In his name, in Jesus. It's about Jesus. 
It's through Jesus. Who wants, by show of hands in here, who wants to go to hell? By show of hands. Okay, if you're embarrassed to raise your hand or uncomfortable, just lightly nod. If you want to go to hell, lightly nod. Okay? Nobody wants to go to hell, but hell is one of only two places where you will spend your eternal existence. There's two kingdoms. Kingdom of life and death. We're going to learn tonight a kingdom of light and darkness. Before we start, we're in uh, John 3. We talked about uh, close encounters with Christ last week. We were splitting John 3.16, and before we got into John 3.17, because Nicodemus came to Jesus, all these people are going to see that Jesus is going through his life. People are going to have encounters with him. And there's two things you can do when you have an encounter with Christ. You can reject him, or you can embrace him. A lot of people have choices. Barabbas had a choice. Malchus, who got his ear cut off, had a choice. His story to tell. What was it going to be? How is that going to change his life? So, you're in a kingdom of darkness outside of Christ. So your life is to be, okay, do I want to stay in this kingdom of darkness and eternal damnation? Do I want to uh, have mercy and deliverance? Or do I want to have misery and damnation? That, that, do you want misery and damnation? Do you know what hell is? It's eternal existence. You're dead spiritually, but you're given a, a new body, an immortal a, a, a body that will exist in all of eternity, feeling torment. There's separation from God. You will never taste of happiness, of joy. Your life will be full of dread, doom, despair. You'll never look for the next instance. You'll never look forward for the next coming moment. And that's your eternity. And that's the lot that you choose when you decide, I'm going to, for this temporary moment, which we call our physical lives, I'm going to stay in the kingdom of darkness, and I'm not going to surrender and go into the kingdom of light, which God is offering. So we're going to jump into 317. We're going to pick back up on 316 a little bit, just so we got a little uh, platform to jump off of. Let me read it first, and then we'll pray. So we're going to start with John 3, 316. Where am I at here? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light. Because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light. It does not come to the light. Lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Let us pray. Father, you laid down some very black and white things here. Whosoever. I mean, that, that, these are black and white things here. Light and darkness. Perish or have eternal life. These are opposites, Lord. These are the two choices. You paved the way through the blood of your dear son. Help us to not only believe that, if we don't already, but to live it out to your glory by bringing this precious gospel to those who are in the darkness and bringing light into that, the world of deception. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So nobody raise their hands. Who wants to go to hell? Nobody raise their hands. So I assume everybody wants to go to heaven. But we know from Christ's own words that the road is broad, huge, wide, and it's full of people who have decided to reject God. Decided, I'm making a choice. It's a choice. Nobody goes to hell 
because I just didn't know that uh, I was supposed to do anything with my life. God has put it in everyone's conscience, in their heart, in their inner being, eternity. God, nature shows God's glory, creation, conscious. Everybody knows. You, will, you want to find something interesting, go and look up famous deathbed confessions. Go look up atheist deathbed confessions. You'll find some interesting stuff in there. People coming to the end of their lives. We won't get into that, but... Can you go back to the first... Oh, I got controls. All right, there we go. Okay. Jesus, God's solution to guilt. We are all born in a state of sin, right? You guys agree? We are born in a state of sin, condemnation, and misery outside of God. Why? Because we're not doing what we were created to do, be in fellowship with God. Go back to the Garden of Eden. You know what? I got four months, four weeks vacation this year. If I could go anywhere, I'm not talking about teleportation, I'm talking about time travel, I would go back to the Garden of Eden before Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And I will take my four weeks, all my four weeks there. Do you know how amazing the Garden of Eden would have been? Paradise would have been fellowship with God, spiritually alive. We don't know what it's like when we're dead to be spiritually alive. Only when you give your life to Christ are you now spiritually alive. And you have his spirit in you. Adam and Eve had that spiritual connection with God right from the going. They had everything. that It's the paradise. John Milton wrote that famous, yes. Let's say during your sleep at night, you're just sleeping. Ask God to transport you to a garden of Eden. Joel saying to, uh, when you sleep and dream tonight, before you go to bed, ask God to uh, take you there. I've had that dreams of that. I told you. And this is my humanity coming through in my sweet tooth, but it always had Hershey syrup rivers, chocolate milk rivers, and Twinkie trees. That was what heaven was like. I had dreams of people. We, <laughs> dream of pizzas. But that might have been the devil. Because you know the devil entices you. The Hershey, the chocolate milk and Twinkies isn't part of a balanced uh, breakfast. <laughs> you want know chocolate milk? Oh, man. You know, the only kids in school are pretty much. <laughs> there he is. The guy that like chocolate milk. Get him. <laughs> Jesus was not on a search and destroy mission. Let's read. God sent his son into the world. Because God loved the world. You know, God could have just done away with it all after an Adam and Eve sin. Boom. Drop dead. Hell. That had been it. The devil and his angels and Adam and Eve. He could have went like this. Done. Someday, somewhere. In the, he's eternal. You know, he sing that song, Yahweh and Yahweh and uh, the self-existing eternal one. What? You gotta be self-existing and eternal to be God. That's a prerequisite. If you're not self-existing eternal, you're not God. There's only one that's self-existing eternal, and that's God. Jesus says, You ain't got no power over me. I got power to lay down my life and take it up again. Now picture this: you're dead in the coffin. Imagine if you had that power. You don't have that power, because only God has that power. This is who we serve. He has given us grace. We don't deserve this second chance. We don't deserve a way. But he didn't make it easy. He's not saying, okay. Uh, what do we used to call that when you mess up? Like a mulligan in golf? All right, all right, redo, redo. Okay, okay. Like I, I try to cheat when I play. Malin, I'm very competitive when it comes to hangman. And a lot of the letters sound alike. And I'll go P. And then she'll go draw the circle of the head. I'll go, no, no, I said B. What? I just said. And then she'll just go B. I, I said G. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I like the renews. I like the second chances. God didn't just say, okay, psh, we're starting over. God said, there's death is required for your sin. That is how holy I am. And that is how, when you disobey me, that is it, it, it's a tremendous rift that cannot be filled with anything but blood. The life of something living. That's why he killed the animals and clothed them with their skins. 
But he had to send his own son in due time to be that once and for all sacrifice. This is God, self-existing, eternal one. He's coming to save us. He wasn't on a seek and destroy mission because he goes and rephrases that. Or not rephrases, he says it in another way. God came into this world. He so loved him. He gave us all his son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Bam. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He wasn't on a search and destroy mission. <clears throat> Jesus went out on a search and destroy mission, but a seek and restore mission. Do you know who's on a seek and destroy mission? There, there, there's the road that Jesus was on. Jesus was on a road to seek the lost. Who's that? Everyone. And to restore them. Do you know, uh, there was a car show. I forget what it was called. Count, maybe the Count's car or... You'd go around, they lived down in Vegas, right? So cars didn't deteriorate as bad as they do around here. Um, and they would go and they would take old custom cars or classic cars and they would restore them, right? So they'd drive around these neighborhoods. they go, oh, look back there, man. That looks like a 57 Chevy. And they'd go in and go, and they'd kick the sides and they'd look around, come <laughs> pop the hood, yeah, yeah. And if they could get it and restore it without losing too much money, they'd buy it. But sometimes they'd go, Man, that's a beautiful car if we could restore it. But this is going to be too much work. That's going to be a total restoration, man. We're going to have too much wrapped up into that. It's going to cost us too much. Aren't you glad our God who seeks and restores, our God who's in the restoration business, doesn't look at us and go, whoa, that's going to take a lot to fix. There's some restoring there. Like me, when I hit rock bottom, I was just a hubcap. You had to restore the whole thing up from a hubcap to a full car. Beautiful paint and running really good. Only God can restore completely what was destroyed. Only God can destroy what, what, what was wrecked and ruined. Only God can put that back together. He came on to seek and save the lost, to restore. Man, a lot of us, we're all restoration projects. Some of us need a little more fixing up, right? But aren't you, aren't you glad God didn't say, hmm, that's going to take too much? He gave his best. He paid the full price. You can't improve on what he put down. He paid it with the blood of his son. Jesus Christ paid for our restoration in his blood. That means everybody can be restored because he's got it paid. Paid in full. Do you know that's what he said on the cross? When he, when, when he uh, built his head tilted down and he gave up his ghost and died. Before he said it, he said, it is finished. To tell us die in that language. That means paid in full. Like your debt is clear. Boom! It, 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 he stamped it in his blood. Paid in full. You're good to go. But you have to believe on me. He says, those who come unto me will have life. Those who reject him are condemned already. Now, you remember in the beginning... <laughs> Nicodemus, the Pharisee, the ruler, came to Jesus at night. You know, there's instances in the Bible where Satan gets in people's ears. Satan tells people stuff. Like King David, from a little kid, killing lions and bears that came after his sheep. But what did he say? It was by God. God delivered these ferocious attackers of my flock into my hands. He said, it wasn't totally me that killed a lion and a bear. God delivered them into my hands. Then he, they ratcheted it up a little more. Then there was a giant. Goliath says, I'm going to rip your head off and feed it to you. I don't know if that's possible. And then he says, you come at me. you got these weapons, spears, and, and I'm coming at you in the name of God Almighty. Faith in God. And then it shows later on, God has given David so much. The, the, the land's of Israel had been expanded further than they ever had from Dan to Beersheba from the north to the south to the east and the west. And, and he was such a great king and had a great military that was just defeating everybody. And then Satan got in his ear. It says he enticed him. Some translations just say incited him. How did he do that? I don't know. This is a spiritual thing here. 
Sin is spiritual. You know why? Because it, it comes up from here in your innermost being, who you are, or what you do. You know, you can steal something, but it's not really physical. The sin is spiritual, the act of it. And here's the devil. It says the devil incited David to count the number of soldiers he had in his army. And David forget, wait a second. It doesn't matter how many soldiers I have. I'm fighting in God's strength, with God's power. My faith is in him. He's delivered me from the bear and the cub. He's delivered me from the giant. He's spread our boundaries as further than they've ever been. He lost faith in God. He didn't, it, I'm not saying he lost faith in God. He decided to put his faith in the strength of himself and his armies. So he told his commander to go out and count, to make sure they had enough soldiers to go against this other army. <clears throat> that was a huge mistake because God, there was a big punishment for that. We won't get into that. But the devil, each one of us, the devil has traps. He has bait for those traps. It's not just an open pit that if you're walking at night, you're going to fall in and, and lay on some sharpened bamboo stakes. This pit is covered. And there might even be a piece of meat over hanging over it. Or a big Twinkie that ought to go, oh, Twinkie hanging in the, that's God. Yes, this is God sending it to me. He knows my desires. The Twinkie. And it wasn't from God. It was from the devil. That's life. The devil, do you think the devil's going to come at you in your strong point? He knows your weaknesses. He knows your desires. And that is why the road of destruction is so big. Because our desires, our lusts, we say this is going to be priority. Obeying God is going to be not priority. I'll get it in when I can get it in. You know, I called the doctor the other day. I said, man, my knee swole up. Can I get in there? We got you in and we'll get you here at three. Get, just get in here at three o'clock. Okay. Some doctors say, no, get an appointment. We'll get you in when we get you in. He can't do it Friday. Why? Because he's going golfing? No, tennis. Okay. God doesn't treat us like that. He's an ever-present help. Why do we treat God like that? I want to pencil you in God. Probably when I need something, I'll come looking for you. And that's what the world does. What if Satan came to Nicodemus? Satan says, I will satisfy all your earthly desires. What do people do when they put God on the back burner? They're doing their thing. What I want to do. And it's not holy. And it's not righteous. Because it's outside of God. And it's outside of an indwelling spirit in you. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit indwelling in you, and you're saying, I'm going to do that later, everything you do is wicked and unrighteous and unglorifying to God. And you're doing it for yourself and your own desires. And that's what draws us away from God, is our own desires. And the devil keeps laying them Twinkies down, and we keep following them and following them. And eventually we fall into the coffin, and eventually we fall into hell. Because sin least of death and death condemnation. But that's what Jesus says. That's what I came for. I didn't come to search and destroy you. In Vietnam, they would go out on search and destroy missions. I was reading about the tunnel rats who went into the tunnels. And these guys were, I don't know, man. They were on a whole different level because there's booby traps and snakes and all kinds of stuff these guys had put in there. They'd go in looking for, because they would have fortified positions in there. They would go out to seek and destroy and blow everything up. Destruction is the devil's calling card. That's what he wants to do. You are hated by the devil. Understand that. He's going to hell and he wants you to bring to it. But he tells you, I'll give you all your earth desires. I will have your back in all you do. Jesus, jump off of this temple side. The angels will catch you. I got you in all you do. I got your back. You follow me and I'll give you power and control. These are the things he told Jesus. Turn these stones into bread. I got you. You hear that word I, I, I? That's who you're serving if you haven't bowed your knee to Jesus. Let's go on. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already. So you're living here 
in a state of condemnation outside of God. Everyone who is not born again, which Jesus told Nicodemus, you have to be born from above. You're born physically, you have to be born spiritually. And I am the only one that can breathe spiritual life into you. So there are two kingdoms and two missions. The kingdoms are the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. The devil is on a mission. The devil hates God, wants to be where God sits, wants to be God, wants to usurp all the power of God, and wants to hurt God. And he hurts God by marring God's creation, by perverting God's creation, by destroying God's creation. And the most infliction is by hurting the ones that are made in his image and making them children of his kingdom. God, you made humans in your image. You breathed, uh, you made them a living soul. They were to serve you. They were to bring honor and glory to you in a relationship of joy, mutual joy. But now look at them. They're serving me, God. Made in your image and they're my children. And people willfully do that. And they go into that. Two kingdoms. There's no other options. Life and death, blessing, curse. The kingdom of darkness, citizens, we just read. They live. The kingdom of darkness is in a living state of damnation, a condemnation. The devil is on a search and destroy mission. He's going out and he's going to, if you're a believer in Christ, he's going to try to mess up your walk. He's going to try to get you to uh, denounce Christ. He's going to try to get you off your eye, off the cross. Shut your mouth from spreading that gospel. He's on a search and destroy mission. Anything that looks like the cross, looks like salvation, looks like a new life in Jesus Christ, he wants to, to quench it. He wants to throw water on that fire. He wants to shut up the gospel proclamation. And he wants people to declare, there's no God. Do your best now. Get all you can now. Live for you. This world's messed up. Nobody's going to look out for you. You've got to watch out for yourself. You've got to get as much money as you can, as much fame as you can, as much whatever, no writings you can. Man, look out in the world. Look what people emulate. Look what people do. you got one. You got cultures that, that gangbang, and it's all about street credibility, and it's all about getting hoes and, and slinging drugs and money and all this jazzy stuff. And then you got other people over here who it's all about, I, I'm just going to work. 80 hours a week, and I'm going to do everything to accumulate all the money I can, and I'm going to have all these houses in different places that I can't meet, and I'm going to be able to give everybody big tips, and my wives and my kids are going to be dressed to the nines. And then you got other cultures who are just living in a desert. I won't go into that bit. Don't live in the desert. Go to where the food is, if you've ever heard of Sam Kennedy. But everybody's living a different life, no matter where they are. And the majority of people... Don't stop and think. Life is not about temporariness. Because you can look and see the little coffins in the graveyard. There was somebody that didn't make it very long. Two, three years old. It don't matter if you watch somebody who's 100 years old die. Man. <clears throat> Here today, gone tomorrow. But people, they look at that end of the line as that's it. Some people say, that's it, I'm just going back to the earth. And some people try to, to, to believe that, that lie. So they start believing it. Okay, look, man, my, my grandpa is like almost 90. My dad was talking to me the other day, you know, you're not going to live that much longer. And my dad prayed with my grandma and my grandpa's sister would have been her. Uh, and if you're watching, I, grandpa, I hope you change your, your, your heart. And they, my, my grandma and her sister-in-law prayed the prayer of salvation and received Jesus. And uh, they have given their life to Christ. And my dad asked my grandpa, do you want to, you know, give your life to God? He said, no. No. So it says here, they don't come out of the dark. They, 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 they don't come to the light because they like the darkness. And I'm thinking, well, what is my grandpa doing? He, I don't see anything he's doing that he, he's not the big time drug dealer in town that, that's killing people with fentanyl and, and heroin. He's not, uh, you know, some pedophile. He's not, what, I, it's pride. 
Hi. I got this. I don't need anybody. I can pick myself up and I can get through this life just fine. Nobody helped me along. Look what Satan said. This is who has the most children in his kingdom on that broad road of destruction. This is what Satan says. This is why he was kicked out of heaven. This is why Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Oh, how are you falling from heaven, O day star, son of dawn? This is talking about Lucifer, about who would become the devil. How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. This Isaiah 14, 12. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. That's what Satan wanted. He was so beautiful, so powerful, so awesome. You can't imagine the glory of Lucifer. That means the illuminated one, the light bearer. He was big stuff. So much big stuff. He says he was perfect in all of his ways. He was amazing. It says until, until sin was found in him. Until disobedience was found in him. Because he started that invisible thing that my grandpa might have. I got this. I've got this far to 90 years old. And I don't know. He needs spiritual operation. He needs God to, uh, he needs to allow God to take that stone out of his heart and put in a fleshy spiritual heart. But he won't let God do that. He says, no, we're not having any of that. That's what we, that's what we worship. When we don't follow Christ, we're worshiping the idol of me, myself, and I. What I want. What I can get. The kingdom of darkness citizens are in a living state of condemnation. You ever seen the movies? I don't know if they do this in real life. Where the guy who's convicted and going to death row, and they've got the electric chair all voted up and ready for him. And he's walking down and the guards yell, dead man walking. Dead man walking. What's it called? The Green Mile? Walking the Green Mile? Dead man walking. That's what everybody outside of Christ is. Dead People walking. Citizens of the darkness are chained by sin. Do you know we are chained in sin's chains of darkness and disobedience? We are chained. You know Jesus gets us free. One end of the shackle is on our ankles. Our spiritual ankles are shackled by sin, which is going to lead to death. And then we're going to find out where the other end of that shackle is, which is tethered in the pits of hell. That's where we're shackled. We are slaves to sin. We do the devil's bidding. Even we could just be pawns in his match. But we're willfully doing the devil's bidding. John wrote this so that people will believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And believe it so, will trust in him. And it's by his name he says. Everyone out there is chained. Those in Christ Jesus are free of change and seated in heavenly places. So those who are walking around in their sin are chained in spiritual shackles. And they're chained to tellers in hell. And that's where they're going. And they are slaves of sin. It says here in Ephesians. Even when we were dead in our trespasses. Even we, we were dead, and our, those who are sh shackled in the chains of sin are dead in their trespasses. They're dead in their sins. Even when we are dead in our trespasses, we were made, God made us alive together with Christ. So Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to get good and say, you know what? I don't want to be a rebel anymore. I want to give my life to you, Jesus. And then Jesus went to the cross. No, he went to the cross while we were rebels. And we were throwing stones at him. And we were spitting on him. And we were plucking his beard out. And we were saying, prophesize when he was blindfolded and taking swings at him. He went to the cross when we are in that rebellious state. But it says, by grace you have been saved. And none of us deserve it. That's what that means. Not one of us earned the favor for Jesus to pay for our sins. 
by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're That's right now. While those who rebel against God and are shaking their fists and saying, I'm making my stand now. I'm going to do me. You do you. I don't even want to see you, God. Don't tamper in my life. Me, myself, and I have got this. We made it this far. We're going to make it again. That's what we tell God. But it says we are seated. That's because we are in Christ Jesus. Christ is seated on the throne. And we are there with them. The spiritual blessings we have are so mind-blowing. We need to operate. It's like we've been given, a, 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 so many of us, I'm not, I don't know about you guys, but like me, when we get the Holy Spirit and we're dwelt by God, it's like we don't understand what we have. It's like, man, look at this. I'm now born again. Look at this knife I got. Isn't it cool? It's awesome. And we go our whole lives until we start getting deeper. And, and Jesus goes, hey, knucklehead, look at all these other things that are in here. Can opener, a, a, a corkscrew, a screwdriver. You know, it's like a Swiss Army knife. We got all this stuff. God makes all these gifts. All these glorious things in us. And sometimes we don't even operate like that. Like we just have the, oh, yes, I'm born again. I got to look at this knife. No, no, there's so much more. That's the closer walk. God says, draw closer to me, and I will draw closer to you. Okay, that's a prerequisite, it sounds like. He also says something before that. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So that means the devil is going to be up in you. He's going to be all the time. Trying to get you, and Jesus says, I will make a way in that time of temptation. I don't know what that means exactly. I will make a way. There's not going to be a door, a portal that opens up with like this murky, uh, kind of like foggy thing that you're going to jump through and go into out of that temptation. Go, thank you, God, for opening that portal and getting me out of that temptation. But God is going to do something spiritually to empower you to resist that temptation. That's what His Spirit does. But you got to cooperate. That means you're drawing closer to God. That's the energy source. When you fur draw further away from the energy, hold on, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Remember those old commercials? Can you hear me now? No, you're too far away. You're going through the hills over by Harmony and everything's lost. You close up. Yeah, I can hear you. That's the relationship. Stay connected and stay up close. Seen in the heavenly places, we just read that. Why do people stay in the darkness? What did he say? What did John say? Why do people stay in the darkness? Because they love it. They love the darkness. Because if they come to light, their works will be exposed. So, if you ask somebody on the broad road to destruction, I've heard this before. Yeah, I know I'm going to hell. You know, I'm all right with that. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light. So when somebody gives any excuse while they're not giving their life to Christ, man, I wish I wish I could have the entire world's attention at one time. Just like sitting down and everybody could hear. And like, because everybody has that option. I want to say, look, man, this is God we're talking about. This is the God who created you. The one who's given you the ability to choose to reject him. And you're going to reject him? The only way to have everlasting life and complete eternal joy with him? And you're going to say, I'm good? That's not me? So many people do that. I was, I'm, I was an, I'm, I'll get right with God tomorrow guy. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And you know how many millions and millions of people were I'll get right with God tomorrow and ended up in a coffin before they got right with God tomorrow? Tomorrow snuck up on them. And now they're in hell. And they're thinking, I don't even know what you think in hell. But I know you're going to have some regrets. There ain't nobody in hell is going to say no regrets. Dread. Doom. All those, it, it, it's not just, see you later, you're gone. No. Eternal separation from God and 
all of the anguish that brings with it. So, I don't know how much more, but we're going to wrap it up. John, Nicodemus came to John and told him what to do, what he must do to be saved, what he must do to be in right standing with God. And the devil is going to come to you by night, by day, by however he does it. He knows your weak points. He won't bother you too much if you are not a child of God. You're right where you need to be for him. But you start thinking about giving your life to Christ. You start trying to go deeper in your walk. The devil's going to come after you. Just remember, he was in us. You can't even see a pale as a comparison. It's infinitely stronger than anything in this world, including the devil. So put your trust in Christ if you don't already. And if you have put your trust in Christ, go out into that darkness. Bring that light into the world. Tell them your grace story. I was here, now I'm here. All by the glory of God. Amen? I'm going to pray as the band comes up. So the question was, why do people stay in the darkness? Isn't that awesome, though, that God pulls us out of the darkness, equips us, and then sends us back into the darkness as, as torchbearers, as light bringers? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for equipping us. Help us to do more for your kingdom. If we can only do it through your power. And it's always to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord does a greater thing than restore us. He actually recreates us. Amen. We are a new creation. There really is nothing left to restore. He makes us new. Praise the Lord. It's even better. Amen. And the Lord wants you to have a full cup. You know? One of my favorite verses when I was first saved it comes from uh, Ephesians 5 and it says, Don't be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. You know, before you can come to the Lord, you got to know there's something better. There's something better than my lustful life that I'm living. The pleasures of this life. And to be filled with the Spirit is way better than anything. Right. Praise the Lord. And that's what this name, this song is called, Fill My Cup, Lord. All we have to do is ask Him. He wants to give, He wants to fill our cup to the beauty, have fullness of joy, full and, and abundant life. Let's stand.
Oh. 
Tim said that about we're a new creation, we're recreated. Um, because I gotta stand before God one day, and he's gonna say, Restore what part of you was any good that was salvageable that I could clean up and add to? Even if you're a rusty hubcap, you're still bringing something to the table, and ain't nobody bringing anything to the table. So, wherever I use the word restoration, I want you to go back in your minds and put the word recreation because God has nothing to work with to restore with us, we're completely. Dead. It's like that invisible. The car's invisible. It's not there. We have to be a totally, we will be a totally new creation. So we're not restored. We're recreated. And he's in the recreation business. Amen. All right. Have a good week. Good to see everybody.